Welcome to the Invincible Innovation Show, the podcast for changemakers. Each week, I talk to the most fascinating entrepreneurs and innovation leaders about innovation, strategy, and design. Hey, everyone. Welcome to a talk about doing social entrepreneurship, doing good, and being successful in business. Welcome to Invincible Innovation Live Show. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm Adima Zorkar, your product innovation and value creation expert. I'll be your host. And today I have a very special guest, Ayel Dad. Hi, Adi. How are you? I'm good. Eldad Postan Koren is an entrepreneur and a co-founder of Shavot, NGO leadership program for girls. We're live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, and you're so invited to join the discussion and ask questions. And now we can start. Why did you go into social entrepreneurship and how did you come to be in Shavot? <laughs> okay, so those, those are two different questions. Uh, let's start mm-hmm. with the, the first one. Um, so back in 2009, I, I was a naval officer and one of the things that I felt very um, strong from my military service was that um, sense of self-efficacy, uh, you know, self-esteem. And, and um, I felt that I can do everything. Like, I don't know if it was a true feeling or, or, or misleading feeling, but this is this what this is what uh, I felt that I, you know, I can conquer the world. And I felt that my military, ser- my military service uh, led me to feel that, that way. And, when, and, in, and back in 2009, I uh, worked a little bit with youth at risk. And I saw that they, they lack this sense and, and they lack this self-esteem. And I felt that, you know, I can do something about it. And this started my path in the social entrepreneurship uh, world. Uh, first, in 2011, I uh, started my first NGO. The NGO uh, name was uh, Shamayim Magbu, the sky is the limit. And we developed self, uh, of self-efficacy through, through uh, social entrepreneurship for, for uh, youth at risk. Um, basically, in, in, in a one-liner, we went to their neighborhood, and we it was an underprivileged neighborhood, um, and we looked with them from their um, eyes about the, the neighborhood, what they what, what is good in the neighborhood, what is bad in the neighborhood, and what they can change in the neighborhood physically. Uh, and then together with them, we built a process where we, you know, created a garden or changed something in the school, but the, the, the idea behind it was that if they will be able to change something in their neighborhood after, afterwards when they, uh, you know, pass by this corner or by this place, they will say, okay, I, I was able to change something in my neighborhood. I will be able to change something in my life. So this, this, this is how, how I started. Um, the NGO Sky's the Limit operated for 10 years. Unfortunately, due, due to the COVID-19, we stopped our operation. Uh, it was in Jerusalem, east side and west side. Um, but this was my first step in, in social entrepreneurship. I think it comes from, well, it's going to be a long answer. Uh, <laughs> no, so I, I will just conclude and then we can move to the second uh, question. Oh, um, so, uh, so I think that um, I have a very strong feeling of taking responsibility um, about my my community, about my neighborhood, about my city, about my, you know about the place we live in. Uh, so this is w- where it comes from. Um, to Shavot, uh, Shavot is an NGO I founded with my ma- with my wife three years ago. Um, we came through a trip and. From one sea to another sea in Israel, from uh, the Mediterranean to the Sea of Galilee, uh, four days um, backpack, um, you know, uh, um, hiking, and um, we found ourselves um, in a situation in life where I did a shift to high tech, where I used to work in a VC, you know, no zero zo- social cause, nothing, social impact. And uh, Ronnie, um, just Ronnie, my wife just finished um, uh, being uh, the chairman of the Hebrew University Student Union, um, and we felt that you know what's the next step? Like what, what how are we gonna 
create value and, and help uh, to the world. And then we started speaking and ask ourselves what, um, what makes us upset. And then uh, inequality, and especially inequality regarding uh, uh, gender inequality, uh, was one of the things that we um, we both find found it like something that we, we would like to do something about it. And th that's that's how how Shabbat started actually. And from wow. then there it you know took other <laughs> other directions. Yeah. So that reminds me, how did I get to, to talk to you? And I said, okay, I want to hear your story. And I remember that I read a post on LinkedIn and you mentioned your paternity leave. Uh, mm. You have like twins. And for me, the fact that a, a person who is not a woman talking about gender equality is, is special, especially talking about fatherhood which is like very uncommon in general, but in Israel, I think even further because we are very, you know, like military wise, like guys are really guys, you know? And for me, it was very spe special. And when I talked to you, I, I saw that it's not only in that aspect in your life, as you see it, like in general, in society, and it bothers you. So what do you think makes you different than any like 99.9% .9 of men that are not even talking about it? Um, first of all, I don't think that I'm, I'm, I'm different. Um, I think that one of the unique things, one of the, 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 the decision that I made in making my, uh, um, you know, uh, fraternity leave as, as, you know, as a symbol was due to the fact that I find myself as a very normal person. Like, you know, I was a naval officer. I live in, I don't know, Tel Aviv. I'm, I'm, I'm in, in the uh, um, stereotype of an Israeli, uh, I'm, you know, I'm bold. So it, it's a very Israeli stereotype. And I don't think that I'm a very, um, uh, how would they say, uh, special or different or strange or I'm, I'm, I'm quite a regular guy. And I think that that was my, my decision to, to say, hey, listen, that there is something uh, abnormal in our society, abnormal in our in in, in our re uh, uh, reality, and and me as a normal person, you know, taking one step back and look at the reality and say, hey, this is not normal. And as a normal person, to say it, it's it's it it makes a difference because if you are abnormal and you say it's abnormal, people will take it, you know, in 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 one way. But if you're a normal guy, a very normative, a sahi maybe. So, so that's that's a different aspect, and I think that it's all it's all about um, being aware and and try to look at the world in different eyes, not only in your eyes. I don't, I don't feel that I'm special. I think that it's just a matter of of you know awareness. Yeah, I guess that I I would just guess that many like of your friends or. People who, that you got responses to said like it's 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 very uh, important to talk about, but mm -hmm. and I, I and I guess that lots of males in Israel stereotype guys would think that way, but they will not do it in a business social network usually, mm -hmm. um, and and that is something which is unique, and the fact that you decided to dedicate your time to do that and other stuff that we're going to talk about. I think is it, it, it's you know like most of the gender equality organizations in mm -hmm. the world that I know of are mm -hmm. are leader the leaders are women, mm -hmm. right? So so it has something to to, to 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 I don't know you could relate to it in many <laughs> ways, but that's the fact. Yeah, I, I think this is this is our flag in Shavuot that we are. Uh, um, first of all, it's my wife and, and me where we founded the, the, the NGO. That's first. Um, but also the board of members, uh, members of the board, sorry, are, are half male and half female. So this is our, like, I would say flag um, because we believe that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, gender equality is something that should be dealt with both by male and female. Um, I think that that's... Um, you know, uh, a standard that we hope to achieve. I, I agree with you that it's not the situation, the, the common situation yeah. today. 
So we have a comment from David Wasserman. So thank you. We need 100% of people of this country rowing in order to succeed and have an impact on the world. Great talk. So thank you, David. So, Thanks, David. So why do you think diversity is, is so important? And, and why do you think it's important for Israel in general and society? I, I, I'm going to surprise you. I don't think it's, it's uh, important. I think it's, it's needed. It's like it's, it's not fair not to have equality. And, you know, when I see my wife and she, she's, she's afraid and, and, you know, she's tall, she's strong. And, and when I ask her, why don't you go jogging, uh, running in, in the park after 6, 6 p.m.? And she told me, you know, I'm afraid. Um, I don't want my girls, I don't want anyone girls to live in such a, you know, such a world. And I think it's just fair to, to balance the situation that was created after years of years of, of uh, um, inequality. You know, it's not like I don't, I don't believe that people say, you know, wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to be unequal towards women. It, it's not a situation. Most, most of us don't think about what we do. Most of us just live. And I think that, that to change normality, to change the way we, the reality, the way it works for thousands of years or for hundreds of years, that's that's a that's a challenge, and and I think that one one of the reason why I posted the post about the the the, uh, uh, the twins and all of this is is try to to change the reality you know step by step. Once again, I'm I'm one hundred percent sure that if I will look at the um, uh, uh, the likes or and the comments about the the, the posts, there are, I would say it's like eighty percent women. Yeah, still, but still you have first you have. 20% men or 30% men. And second, I think that it brought to the table, to the table in the houses, conversation which was unique. Even if it was brought by the women, that's fine. But yeah. it, it brought a new conversation to the table and, and hopefully, you know, this, this will move the needle. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of something that I always tell, tell my kids. I take them to protests and then we're going to Tel Aviv for many, many protests. And in many cases, they, they tell me, especially the teens, like, where are you going? It will not change anything. You're just going. And it doesn't matter what, are, what is the, the cause of, of the protest. And I always tell them that there is this song in Israel, you know, Tipa or Tipa. Mm -hmm. It's like a drop after where a drop will, will become mm -hmm. a, a sea. And I always think about it, like we're doing really, really small steps in our environment, in our house, in our community and further. And that's the only way bottom, bottom up to do changes. It will probably not come from the, 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 yeah, the top down thing. Yeah. You know, what, what's very interesting about what you, you just said, that when I was a kid, I was, uh, my parents took me to many protesters and, and, and I just, and it's so strange because today when I'm, and I was chairman of the Hebrew University Student Union. So, you know, it was like the stereotype of, you know, walking and, and doing protests every day. And, and personally, I'm not that guy that shouts uh, and, and, you know, hold signs. It, it's not me. And I found my unique way how to change the world and social entrepreneurship where, where you are measured by, um, execution skills and you know making things happen and fundraising and and putting together people that's I, I found that as a much more efficient uh, a, a way for me to to try to change the world yeah of course so when we're talking about uh, what you're doing with the girls in in Shavuot it's a leadership program and what do you teach them what do you think is important for their lives and for success for, their, for themselves. So Shavuot started, as I told you, uh, in this uh, four days uh, hiking. And one of the things that we came along in, in this hike was the fact that there's a research from Stanford University, um, Carol Dweck. Actually, we met her a couple of years ago. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. She's so, so, so smart and special. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we, we knocked on her door. We, actually, we sent her an email saying, hey, we're going to be in Stanford. We, we, you know, we founded an NGO based on your research. And, 
and she didn't answer. Um, so <laughs> but we you're were... an Israeli, so it, That's it, true. it didn't do anything to you, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, so we went to her office. Um, we expected her not to be in the office because, you know, she, she's, she's 80 years old or something like that. And, and she was there. <laughs> and we knocked on the door. <laughs> we knocked on the door. She was with a student, with a student, and then uh, we waited. And she, the student, left. And then we we told her, "Hey, uh, Professor Dweck, uh, you know, we came from Israel to 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 see you." And she was like, "I don't have time." And we said, "It's gonna be five minutes." And <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah, it was story. very very Israeli. Um, yeah, very. <laughs> so, so we met her, and it was very, very interesting, and and we kept uh, some kind of a connection uh, and since then. Anyway, so uh, just uh, tell me what like, did what did she think about what you said about the nonprofit? She, first of all, I think she she's she's Jew. Uh, um, I am quite sure. Uh, so she have a, a kind of connection to Israel. She liked it very much. Um, you know, I think as a academic person, a researcher. There's one thing that you know you write books and you write reports and you write and and when someone takes it and makes it into an actual thing, I think it's a very a, a interesting thing to see. Uh, so she 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 really liked it. Um, so basically, the, uh, uh, going back to the um, initial story, um, so uh, her study and other studies shows that girls at the tw- age of twelve, when when you put a, a, a boy and a girl. And both of them will fail um, an exam. Um, the girl will tend to say, "I'm not good at math. Uh, yeah. I shouldn't deal with math." The boy will say, "The exam was wrong. My teacher was wrong. My parents were wrong. I'm fine." And yeah. and once again, it's just a tendency. It's not 100 percent, but th- that's a tendency. Um, and. One of the things that uh, uh, Cameron and other researchers says that this tendency affects the rest of your life, because it means that you won't uh, uh, go to learn five. Uh, 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 you know, uh, you make uh, uh, learn math in the university. You won't yeah. uh, apply to positions you don't, uh, uh, you know, feel comfortable to, to take. Yeah, and and, and it's it's quite common the rest of the the facts. But what I'm saying that one of the things that Carol said that in order to change this tendency is by teaching girls, young girls, and specifically at the age of between 10 to 13, because that's an age where you have. Uh, a reduction of a drop of 30 percent in the self-esteem of girls um, which is fascinating and actually we validated this also in Israel this was a global uh, fact but we we had a research done a couple of months ago in more than 600 uh, uh, kids in Israel and we validated also here unfortunately um, and, and in order to, to change this, what we do is we teach them how to set goals and how to do a self-feedback. And when I say set goals for us as, as mature, it sounds you know, quite obvious, but for a 12 years girl, it's not obvious saying, you know, let's look at the next month. First, it's not, it's not obvious for a girl to look to say what's gonna be in the future. That's one step, yeah. which is interesting. And second, in next month I have, uh, um, exam in math, math exam. Um, what should I do in order to get 80, a grade of 80 in this exam? So I need to have a plan. And then you need to follow the plan. And when you get the, the, you know, to the exam and you got 75, uh, you, you should debrief yourself and say, okay, I got 75 not because I'm not good at math. Um, maybe I did the plan wrong or maybe I prepared to the exam with not the right person. So you learn how to to see in every failure and success as a a, a key to to learning. Um, And that's basically where Shavuot started. And this is one feature that we are very focused, like it's setting goals and and, and, and self-feedback. And other fields are um, public speaking, social networks, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, taking decisions, and it's all uh, been dealt with uh, the inspiration of uh, inspiring women from the history. Yeah. 
So, so what you're saying is that I cannot uh, convince myself that I'm worth, as you say, Shavuot. <laughs> I need to do things in order to overcome my fears, in order to create something in the world and then see, yeah, I can do this. And only this is the only way to really have self- self-esteem and to, to really understand that, yeah, you can do it. And it's not that you are uh, maybe less, in, less uh, successful in, in, in math or uh, you don't know it or whatever. But what is the difference when you're saying like for young teens in general, I have two of them at home. Mm-hmm. So that's, That's very common. What you're saying is that usually when they're, when they are not successful, probably they will blame themselves. And yes. that's, that's the component which is different. Yeah, and, and I think there are two other layers for this for this uh, for what we do is first Shavot, which is worthy, but in, in parallel, not, not in, in singular. And, and I, I'm saying that and I'm mentioning that because I think that uh, networks in life, Uh, is one of the most important things for for example in Israel most of the the male have our uh, um, military network which is you know a a 200 and and you know everyone uh, and the unit he was belonged to so alumni organization are very strong in Israel most of the women don't have alumni network That's, that's right. first. So, so what we are trying to create is each one of the individuals that participate in Shavuot feel worthy, but also to create a network of girls that speak the same language and can help uh, each other by, you know, the, in the rest of their life. So that's one layer. The second layer above that is, um, you know, history. History was written by, by mostly male. Most of the, 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 the inspiring people that we know are male. And, and that's given it's it, it's the history um, and what of the one of the things what we, we try to to achieve in Shavuot is to show female inspiring women uh, 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 role models in order to, to show them hey you can be whatever you want and I think that this layer of you as yourself feel worthy as, as a community you You, you should feel worth it altogether and you have inspiration you can do everything and and we truly believe that if you can see it you can be it yeah so till now we talked about the social entrepreneurship and now I yes. want to go into the business mm-hmm. entrepreneurship and how did you do the jump from one thing to the other and how do you see the connection in general um, it's, it's a good question Um, so at the age of 30, uh, which was six years ago, I decided um, that I want to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, till then, I was only in the Navy and in the world of social and, social and political entrepreneurship, as I said, NGOs, the Hebrew University Student Union. And I must, must admit, it was not an easy job to do. Um, when I came to, to interviews, uh, I remember the, one of the first interviews, They looked at me and say, what, 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 are you, what is your connection to this job, to this world, to this ecosystem? It was, it was really hard to digest. Um, and, um, and for me, it was part of, of my, uh, I don't know if my mission, my, my, my journey, uh, saying, okay, I... I I feel that I know how to do social entrepreneurship now I want to, to see other other forms of, of entrepreneurship and and I you know I insist I insisted and then then uh, I was very consistent and then uh, somebody opened opened the door for me uh, in, in a VC in a venture capital in Jerusalem and that was my half of First step in this world I participated I participated in an entrepreneurship program in Brenda's University near, near Boston and but afterwards my, my first position was uh, in a VC um, and today in a retrospective uh, 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 approach I can tell you that I see many many common dominators between social entrepreneurship and, and business entrepreneurship I think the soft skills and whether that whether it's you know and the ability to speak uh, uh, public speaking whether it's it's um, you know to be very uh, to have a grit to have a, a, 
perseverance, um, the ability to get no's and to keep doing, to the ability to, to put pe people together, to put, you know, uh, enthusiasm into the eyes of other people. I think that's, that's very, very, very common. Uh, of course, it's, it's a different situation to fundraise for philanthropy and to fundraise as an investment because the whole relationship based on, on, on different incentives um, but once again, I think that in the initial parts of building a company, most of it is when you fundraise is based on the, your ability to, to harness the, 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 uh, um, the trust of the other side in you, not in the idea in you. And that's, that's very similar to NGOs. Yeah. I could tell you that I work with lots of entrepreneurs through the years and I've met many of them and most of them, when, when I, even I talk to people in this uh, show, I ask people, what is the most important part of being an entrepreneur? And most of them would, would say the, the mindset, like what you said, like the greed, the perseverance, the, the insisting to go and meet Carol Dweck, although she's busy and she's not answering and she tells you just to go away. I think this is the most important part of, of going through this journey of, of creating something in an unknown situation with getting lots of failures and no's, as you says, and, 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 and the fact that you know that you want to create something is the most important part because you will probably get lots of, um, I know downsides on the way. Mm. And if you don't have it, so that, that's, that's the most important part though. It's for sure that, that that is something uh, which is part of what you're doing, right? I, I think an interesting way to, to look at it, uh, and I thought about it a couple of days ago, uh, as, as a funnel, uh, like a sales funnel, when you have, you know, this is the word, this is the people you approach, and this is the people you manage to sell. Let's say that's, that's a simplification. Yeah, yeah. And when you think about fundraising, whether it's for NGO or whether for a, a startup, as a funnel saying that, it, it said the expectation that you will get no's. And this is this is natural. That's fine. If you yeah. think about life as, as a funnel, no, it's just another, you know, it's part of the game and you shouldn't take yeah. it personal. It's uh, even the default, I would say. Like first yeah, you get a no. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what would you say like for people who want to build a company or to be successful in business, would you say that diversity, when you know about your first hat as a social entrepreneur, is important for business too? Let, let me take it even to a broader way. So diversity, I think it just one form of a EQ, of emotional quality. And I think that being able to see reality from the eyes of a different person which means to be very sensitive about, you know, and I'm not speaking about politically correct. I, I, I speak about the, the ability to truly understand his, uh, 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 where he's coming from or she's coming from. And then based on this, to, to make a decision how you react, that's fine. But I think that EQ uh, is a key element um, for every successful leader. Um, so diversity is just one form of, of EQ. Um, mm. Yeah. And, and, and we know that when we're talking about numbers, that when you have people like women in your board, you're most successful. If you have more women in your uh, higher management, you're probably making more money in general. And that's why many VCs are trying to get that into consideration other than the legal or you know, the rules in the, in the country, you know, to, to just to be, especially, you know, like in the past, I met um, many entrepreneurs who were building things, uh, let's say for consumers. And, and, and usually most of the consumers in the world are women in general, they buy more and they buy everything, not only for themselves. It's not like buying shoes. They're buying the presents. They're buying everything for the house other than electronics. They're, 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 they're the ones who manage everything. And you see lots of men selling to women not really understanding them in many cases. And, and I think that this is something very critical just to understand that if you're selling to someone 
And it's not only your brand and it's not only your product. It's the way that you see your business when you handle that. Yeah, first of all, I 100% agree with you, but, but I, I, I must say now, now we're in a, in a process of fundraising. And, and, and it goes back to what I said in the beginning, that you have the reality and you want to change the reality. And sometimes to do that, it's not very simple. And, and just to give an example, when, when you go to angels in Israel, I, I think there are like five angels or 10 female angels. Female, for sure. Yeah. And, and that's a challenge because you want diversity, but reality don't help you to encourage diversity. Now, now you are an entrepreneur. And as an entrepreneur, you're in a, a survival mode. Yeah. So now to put a, a, a emphasis on diversity when you're in, on survival mode, it's very hard. Of course. So it's a challenge. Like how how do you how, how do you you know walk the walk? Yeah. And and not just talk the talk, even though the situation and the the, the circumstances are very challenging. That's yeah, a challenge. of course. Currently, I'm I'm working with with a company who is a startup in, in Israel, and they have 50% women, and mm. that's that's the main reason I decided to join them and work mm. with them for so long. And I told him, you know, this is the like the highest thing that you have in your company. That's for me is the most important part. And they was they were a bit disappointed because they. They thought I would say it's their talent or their idea. Mm -hmm. But for me, it, seeing so many startups with, I don't know, 80, 90% men, and, and if they have a woman, it's HR, more or mm -hmm. less. It, for me, it's the, it's the most important part of what they're doing. And I think that this is what will make them successful in the end. It, I it's, agree. It's everything. I, I agree, but by the way, when you said that mainly HR, it reminded me the fact that uh, like almost three years ago, I, I, I was exposed to the world of sales in Israel and, and in general. And, you know, before that, I was a, like, I think like 90% of the Israelis was uh, uh, thinking that sales is like, you know, pitching a, a Dead Sea products in malls. And... And three years ago, when I expo was exposed to the world of uh, B2B sales uh, for technologies, I, I, I understood that, that that's a fascinating world and, and very clever and, and very sophisticated. And I was very upset to see that almost no uh, uh, um, women goes to, to this direction. And mostly, the, most of the, the, the female goes to, uh, most of the women goes to uh, customer success, where it's less salesy. But I, I, I must admit, I think that that's, that's a, a great opportunity today, mainly for, for the one who didn't go to learn, you know, computer science and, and, and the, the R&D part of the, uh, of companies. I think that's that's a huge opportunity for for women. If you hear me now, go to be sales women in in startups. That's a great opportunity, very interesting, and a, and a great way how to you know to move forward in in the business world and in in high tech. Yeah, I think that in general, I, I totally agree. For me, it was not like the Dead Sea people who sell in carts in in the malls in the U.S. For me, it was like a, a used a car salesman which is even worse. And when I understood the world of sale, then, and I know that for sure uh, it demands so much EQ just to understand who is in front of you and, and what he's really saying or not saying to you, actually. And I think that I, I read like a few months ago a, a, an article saying that women are much better in sales, even mm -hmm. though even though like you would expect it will be more manly because we're talking about numbers and money, which is an issue with, with women in general. And when you think about sales as connecting to people, just yeah. understanding what will be a win-win here, especially if it's a, it's, it's a big like a agreement, it, it's the most important part. The other thing like technical stuff the, and the numbers are a part of it, but it's, I would say like 30% of, of the deal maybe. And, and, and I, first, I agree. And, and second, just to say that I think that the power shift now uh, under COVID-19 where 80% of the cells turned into remote 
and you don't need to travel so much as it used to be. So that's what for sure an opportunity for for a, a, a women with with kids. Unfortunately, most of the the burden of uh, the housekeeping and you know uh, the kids are on them. But now, when you don't need to travel so much, um, I think that's that's a new path that was just waiting for women to 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 walk in. Yeah, I totally agree. So, so I have so many questions and, and, and I'm trying to select the ones that I want to talk about. Like, what is the most surprising thing you learned about success in your journey? Success, it's, it's, a, it's a frightening word. I, don't, I, I wouldn't say success so, so easily. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that many people, when they think about success, they think about wealth, money, being famous. But I, I'm asking that because everyone has his own definition. And, and for you, I want to hear what you think about that. Okay. So a couple of, of weeks ago, um, I, found, I, I read a book. And, 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 and one of the things that it made me think is that for me, success means... Um, I, I'm, I'm not that interested in money and fame. And, and for me, success is knowing that I took brave decisions all the way. And taking brave decisions, you know, a, a, doing a campaign to, for the student union was a brave decision. I did some very uh, uh, strong moves in the student union that many people didn't like, uh, even hate. Um, and then shift to high tech was a, to some extent brave move. Now building my own company is a brave move. So my way of doing things, the methodology, the mindset, the, the, the way that I pick the, the things that I do, um, I, I hope to be brave in each one of those uh, junctions and to be brave in each one of those decisions and for me if I will be able to be brave in each one of them in in every day uh, it means that I was successful yeah I wish you all the luck in that what was the book what is the name of the book so I love uh, Gandhi I really love Gandhi um, yeah. I think he was a very brave uh, person and um, and he talked and he walked the walk and uh, you know yeah, it's, it's sure. you know one of the things that you People didn't like uh, um, John Lennon was he you know spoke about the world with no possessions and no money and on the same time he he held like I don't know like four ten houses or something like that so it's one thing to to call for for change in reality it's one thing to and and it's another thing to do it and and you know to say, India should be free and I will free it with my bare hands and I, I think that that's very inspiring um, and I think he was very brave and yeah. he paid he, and he paid the, the the highest price right his life and it, it's the book that his son uh, his son wrote a book about him and and the the gift of I, I think he, I think he's, he's a grandson his grandson yes yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. It was, yeah. He was very young when he wrote it. It's, yeah. it's one of my favorite books. You know, I love reading and I always like trying to get like recommendations for good books. So, so that's a yeah. good one. Yeah. So I have my last question because we're almost done with time. What is your number one tip for entrepreneurs? Wow. Um, do sport. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that... I think that um, sport, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of cliche, but you say, you know, a healthy spirit in a healthy body or whatever. Um, but, but to some extent, uh, it really helps me now, now, now that we are in a, in a process of fundraising. And, you know, from, so for the last eight months, I was in ideation process and now I'm, which is, It's, it's hectic it's it's horrible it's I, I as a, a very 
mission oriented person that's that's the worst situation i can think about <laughs> it's like, not practical yet so it's, it's not like practical hard. every four days or every four weeks you you know you you throw away everything you worked on and and that's that's horrible for me and and you don't and you don't move you know not nothing is happening not nothing um yeah nothing practical is happening right? yes uh, so the, the mindset changed and you move uh, yeah. but but for me that that was horrible now to survive this situation and now to survive the fundraising uh, period uh demands a lot of um uh, and mental resources and i think for me uh, uh, running for example uh, uh, even though it's so super hot and humid here in Tel Aviv now uh, it is. <laughs> but but to go 5 a.m to run and 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 to to clear your mind and and concentrate on, on breathing and 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 to take one one moment even without distractions um that that's that 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 is where i found the uh, that that's what i find my my silence and and concentration and so highly recommend it. yeah it's like your meditation while running like other people would just <laughs> that's sit true that's so where true. could people hear more about what you're doing and contact you um i'm very active on the social networks some people will say too active <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that that's also comes with a price. When you are um, a extrovert, uh, when you are very out there, um, the other people then don't like it. Um, yeah, it's it's part of this. Yeah, uh, oh, I'm an extrovert too, so it's like part yeah. of the job, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm very active in on, on social media, so people can find me very easily. I'm the bold guy. Uh, I have a bold picture, so that's that's very easy to uh, recognize. Yeah. So, well, Dad, I want to thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you and fun. You <laughs> and thanks. For me as well. And, right. And to all of you changemakers out there, thank you for joining us. And if you want to learn more about what I do, you could go and visit invincibleinnovation.com. And I'll see you next week with another innovative, insightful talk. See ya. Bye, Eddie. I'm Adima Zaukario, and you've been listening to the Invincible Innovation Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, invincibleinnovation.com, where you can learn more about our programs and my book, Innovating Through Chaos. I'll be waiting for you next week in our next episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.